In this video, we'll see radiation exchange between real surfaces. In particular, we'll define what are known as radiative resistances that are useful quantities for computing the exchange between real surfaces. So the surface that the, uh, we are considering here is all real surfaces, but they are not open in general, they are in an enclosure. So we have a real surface that is in an enclosure. Not only that, we are going to make uh, approximations that each of these surfaces are opaque, essentially meaning the transmission is zero. The radiation from the radiative properties in the surface are diffuse, meaning that none of them is dependent on the angle. And lastly, it is gray that the properties of uh, emissivity and absorptivity and deflectivity are not a function of the wavelength. So under these circumstances, we can make some simplifying uh, calculations. Again, recall the net radiation leaving a surface is QI. And that is nothing but the total outgoing flux, which is the radiosity, minus total incoming, which is the irradiation. So AI times outgoing minus incoming is the net heat due to radiation that leaves the surface. Leave is important, keep that in mind. Now, let us write expressions for Ji and Gi. First, let's write expression for Ji. So Ji is nothing but, this is the real surface. Therefore, the uh, emissive flux here is epsilon i times Ebi. So note that there could be n number of surfaces and each surface could have a different emissivity. And each surface could be at a different temperature. Therefore, we call it as EBI. So this could be at a different temperature. Uh, uh, surface two could be a different temperature and so on. So this is total uh, emissive power due to uh, emissions. Then there is emissive uh, reflective power that comes from reflectivity times the irradiation, which is GI. Now note that we have made an assumption of opaque, diffuse, and gray surfaces. So opaque essentially means that the reflectivity equals one minus absorptivity, alpha. And the surfaces being diffuse and gray means that epsilon equal to alpha. Under these assumptions, we can make some simplifications here rho i becomes one minus alpha i, but alpha i is nothing but epsilon i. So rho i becomes one minus epsilon i. So taking this expression and substituting for g from here in this expression, we get q i equal to e b i minus j i divided by one minus epsilon i and then you have this epsilon i ai. So what is this? The net radiation leaving the surface is the black body component of the radiation minus the radiosity divided by some factor. Now this expression looks similar to what we have seen in uh, current voltage uh, uh, networks. So if you think that this is the current and this is the potential difference, then this becomes the resistance. So this is called as the uh, radiative driving potential. We'll see the meaning of this when we actually draw our networks, but for the moment you take it to be a difference between the black body radiation minus the radiosity. That is the radiative driving potential mine, uh, divided by this which is called as the radiative resistance. Particularly, it is called as the surface radiative resistance. Why it is surface radiative resistance will become clear when we see uh, an example of this. 
So this is surface radiative resistance that is difference between black body minus radiosity divided by this resistance that gives an expression for QI, which is the net radiation leaving a surface. Now we can, uh, this net radiation that leaving a surface can be used to interpret some uh, expressions that, which we have been using as approximations in our earlier uh, lectures. Consider a very large surface AI. So let us say there is one large surface that is much greater than all the other surfaces AJ. That is taking AI tending to infinity. Then if you uh, note this expression, you have that this resistance here, this goes here. So when if AI tends to infinity, then this factor JI tends to EBR or this factor tends to zero. What we are saying here is that if you have one surface in a collection of surface, which is much larger than the others, then the radiosity that is coming out of that surface AI denoted as can be approximated as a black body radiations. So this is what we have been assuming earlier in our uh, classes that once you have, let's say you have a body inside a big room, then the big room surfaces can be taken to be a black body emitter. The reason is that the area of that uh, big body is much large compared to the area of the other bodies in the room. Now we define another useful quantity called as the geometrical resistance. Again, uh, come back to the definition of the net radiation leaving a surface, which is QI times AI. JI is the net uh, radiosity that is flux leaving the surface. GI is the irradiation flux. So JI minus GI is the net uh, radiation leaving the surface. Net heat due to radiation leaving the surface. Expression for GI can be written. So GI is nothing but an irradiation. So where this, in, in case of enclosed surfaces, irradiation can come only from the other surfaces. So other surfaces means for each of the surfaces J, F, J, I. So for each of the surfaces J, from J to I, whatever fraction that is coming, that is AJ, FJI times GI. So this is basically the definition of uh, view factor from J to I. So sum over all these things is your irradiation flux on GI. Again, using reciprocity relationship, you can write this AI, FIJ, J, J. Further simplifications, if you substitute GI back here, and then you have AI times JI, and we write this factor, which is sum over J, F, J, I. Recognize that this is just identically equal to one. We have just introduced so that we can pull it out of this uh, expression. Times F, I, J times J, J. So because this is J, I, you can just pull it out and write this as sigma aj, sigma over all j, ai times fij times ji minus jj. Now recognize that this term ai, fij, ji is nothing but q i to j. That is the fraction of a Q that goes to, that is um, all Q that goes from I to J. This is the definition of the view factor. And Q I J is nothing but I to J minus J to I. This is the net uh, exchange between I and J surfaces is all the thing that is going from I to J minus all the thing that is coming from J to I. This is the net exchange between I to J. So this expression here, F A I F I J J I minus J J is nothing but 
sum over q i j. So this expression is nothing but sum over q i j. Now, if you uh, write this expression q i is sum over j a i j j i minus j j, and this a i f i j, we bring it to the denominator and put it as an inverse. Okay, so this is q i equal to some difference divided by uh, the thing in the numerator inverse. Again, this can be interpreted as a a potential difference divided by a resistance. So this potential difference is called as the radiosity driving potential. That is, radiosity between two surfaces. Surface I's radiosity minus surface J's radiosity divided by something which is A I F J I. Notice that this is purely geometric. There is no emissivity or uh, any other property that had that is coming here. So this is called as a geometrical resistance. So we have Q I, which can be written as a uh, radiosity driving potential divided by geometrical resistance. And that is summed over several such combinations of I and J. Now, what is the use of this? So we saw two different resistances. One QI, which is EBI minus JI by one minus epsilon I by EI AI. So this was purely a surface property where you had a surface property such as uh, epsilon I coming into picture. We also got a second expression for QI, which was sum over all uh, radiosity difference by a geometrical resistance. So one is a surface uh, measure, other is a surface I to all the surface J measures. So using this, we will construct what is known as a radiation network. So consider again an enclosed surface of uh, gray and diffuse radiation inside. You have this uh, surface. Let's say one surface, we call it as I. Let us say that is T1 here. And we are trying to find out what QI is. Now let's take an expanded view of uh, this section. So we have split this body into two parts. One is a black body core, we're writing as BB core. So we have a BB core here, and there is a surface here. So there is a body bulk plus a surface. So this is just a notation to remember the meaning of these resistances. So the entire body we are representing by something which is a core, which is a black body, and there is a surface on the top of it. And where is the radiosity happening? The reflection and the emission is actually happening only on the surface. So there is a, a radiosity on the surface. Surface has got some different property and there is a black body core. Now take a look at this expression. So the current or the flux heat that is going is written as a potential difference by resistance so that we write it like this. So the heat that is flowing is a difference between the black body I minus J I, which is on the surface. So the black body core minus J I on the surface, surface radiosity, divided by the resistance. This is one minus epsilon I by E I A I, epsilon I A I. So this resistance is on the surface. So this is a surface resistance. That's why it's called a surface uh, resistance. So the surface resistance is having a potential difference between these both. So what it means is that if your um, Ji is almost equal to Bi, which is equal to black body uh, radiation, then this uh, Qi part from here is zero. So this potential difference is, uh, if it is zero, then um, this is also zero. Or you can also interpret is that if you have a very large 
resistance. So let's say if this resistance is very large, okay, even then this is zero. So when when is this large? This resistance will be large if a i is very small or um, epsilon i. Uh, okay, the other way you can see is that epsilon i is also um, if epsilon i is close to one and right, or it's close to zero, then also this uh, factor will be one over uh, which is roughly zero. Uh, one over zero comes here, so this becomes a very uh, large quantity. So this then the this difference is quite large. Okay, so this is with respect to the surface resistance. Then we have the same QI now is across several such radio city differences. So that we represented by a network like this. So there is this radio city potential I and there is J1, J2, J3 and so on up to Jn. J1, J2 up to Jn. Now each of these resistances has this expression Ai, F, Ij. For example, for uh, between I and two, surface number two, it will be Ai times F I two. So this resistance will be Ai F I two inverse. So this is the rest. similarly you will have for a surface n, surface uh, one, and so on. So if you want to see in terms of an electrical current network, so there is a current that is coming here, then it gets split into three or four parallel networks. Okay, so this is resistance in parallel and then this resistance, this entire parallel thing is series with this. The equivalent thing here is you have a black body core and then there is a resistance here which is in, is in series with the sum of all these things and these things are all in parallel to each other. So we'll see in small example of how this is used in the case of two surfaces. So here we have an enclosed surface. There is one surface here, surface number one, which is at area A1, temperature T1 and epsilon one. And there is a uh, radio city of that surface is J1. Then we have surface number two, which is area two, temperature T2 and emissivity epsilon two and its radiative uh, radio city is J2. So if you want to write the uh, electrical resistance, we could write start from the core of the uh, body one. So that is EB1. Then there is resistance one minus epsilon by epsilon one A1. Then there is radio city J1. In this case, it splits only to uh, one surface because this surface uh, J1 does not go to J1 on itself, right? So J1 only goes to J2. So J1 to J2, there is one by A1, F12. Then going inside from J2 to inside the core of that black body, which is EB2 has got resistance one minus epsilon two by epsilon two A2. So the net Q12, which is going through this is exactly equal to Q1 because whatever is flowing through this is what that is flowing through. There is no second parallel network here in case of two surfaces. And that is equal to minus Q2 because remember QI is something that leaves the surface. And since we are writing it this way, uh, in this, uh, sign convention, this is something that goes here. So therefore what leaves is minus Q2. Now, because this and this are black body, so we can write this entire cu current through this network as the potential difference between here 
and here, which is EB1 minus EB2. So EB1 is nothing but sigma T1 power 4. EB2 is sigma T2 power 4. These are all black body. And the way the emissivity of these two bodies enter is through the resistances. So if we want to calculate the net radiative X heat transfer between the surface one and two, all we need to do is to consider this black body minus that black body, sigma T1 power four, T2 power four, divided by the sum of resistances, which is this internal resist surface resistance plus geometric resistance plus surface resistance of the second body. There are two other applications of this series systems. The first is radiation shields. So radiation shields are um, uh, low emissivity and high reflectivity material. So suppose you have a surface which is uh, radiating a lot of heat and you don't want that heat to come to, to, to your outside surface. So let's say this is in contact with the uh, outside surface where people could touch this and you don't want this one to be hot. So if you want to contain the radiation, you put this radiation shield, which has got low emissivity. That is, if this is at a particular temperature, it will not emit heat to here. If this is also going to emit heat with a high emissivity, then this, will, this surface will again get heated up by radiation. So it is low emissivity and high reflectivity. So which means that anything that comes here will be reflected back here. So there'll be very, uh, there is, and no trans, uh, transmission is zero. So such materials are uh, uh, very useful materials. And uh, this, the radiation exchange in the presence of radiation shield can also be carried out in the uh, framework of this resistances. So now we'll see the resistance network here. So let's start with EB1, which is the B1, which is the um, black body core of one. Then we have J1, that is the radio city of one. The difference between that is the surface resistance here. Then J1 to J31, there is only one surface. It, it, it does not see any other surface. So J1 to J31 is only one surface. From here to here, only one surface. And that geometric factor is 1 by A1 F13. So something goes from 1 to 3. Then you have the core of this, surface 3. So it is B3. So core of uh, surface 3 is this side emissivity. So we are talking about uh, this side emissivity, that is E31. 31 is the emissivity of this radiation shield on this side. So this is a, a shield which can have emissivity different on this side and that side. So this side emissivity is E31, E31 by uh, 1 minus epsilon 31 by epsilon 31 A3. So we have finished the network for the left-hand side. Now let's write the network for the right-hand side. Now, uh, for starting for the network for the right hand side is again B3. So that is the core of this uh, shield, which is EB3, to the surface of this, which is 3, 2. That is uh, material 3 facing 2. So material 3 facing 2 is this. So there we have J32 is the radiosity. And then we have the surface resistance corresponding to this emissivity, which is 3, 2 emissivity, and 1 minus E3, 2 by E3, 2, A3. Then from J3, 2 to J2, this is a geometric resistance. So that geometric resistance is 1 by A3, F3, 2. Then going inside the core of body as uh, 2, which is EB2. So such a complicated thing, we could simply uh, reduce by a series of resistances. So if you know this uh, EB1 and EB2, we can simply compute the sum of all these resistances and then find the total heat exchange. And therefore, this can also be used to design your uh, surface of the shield what should be E31 and what should be E32 such that you get this uh, uh, desired flux. 
The second application of the series resistance is what is known as a re-radiating surface. Again, this is an applied uh, material which is used in industries. A re-radiating surface is one which emits all the radiation that it receives. So whatever it re receives, there is irradiation is GI, it emits everything. When can this be achieved? Uh, one way to achieve this is if you have a surface where the radiation side of the surface, the convection is negligible. Let's say it's like vacuum or it's nearly still uh, environment. The convection is negligible and the outside surface is insulated. So negligible convection on the same side as radiation and outside surface is insulated. Then if you construct a, a control volume, what you will see that net heat that is going out of surface I is zero or essentially that GI equal to JI. That is, there is no convection here and there is no uh, flux. This surface is adiabatic, so there is no flux here. There is no convective flux here. So whatever comes in by radiation goes out by radiation. So this is a important identity for the following reasons. Now remember that when we considered opaque, diffuse and the gray surface, the net heat out of the surface was EBJ, EBI minus J by one minus epsilon A, AI. So this was, this relationship was obtained only in the condition of opaque, diffuse and gray surface. And now what we're saying, in the case where there is no convection in the surface, outside surface is insulated, QI is zero. If QI is zero, that means that EBI equal to JI or JI equal to EBI. And EBI is nothing but sigma t power four. What is interesting about this? The interesting thing is that the emis, the flux, the radiosity flux is no longer a function of the emissivity of this surface. So although the surface might have a finite emissivity or reflectivity and so on, just by imposing this no convection and no insulation condition, the and it is a steady state balance, because QI is zero, we are able to get an expression for the radiosity purely in terms of the temperature and there is no emissivity. So in uh, tutorials, we'll see examples of how to use this in a, radio, uh, in a radiation network and solve some problems. To summarize, we discuss about real enclosed surfaces, which we, in the process of uh, handling enclosed surface, we define two Radiact, uh, radiative resistances. One is the surface radiative resistance, which represents the resistance from a black body core to the surface, the potential coming from that. And the second uh, difference, which is the geometric uh, resistance, which comes from the radiosity difference and the uh, all the FIJ parameters, which is the uh, view factor between two surfaces. This one was in series with this, and there are several geometric uh, resistances were all in parallel to each other. Then we uh, introduced two uh, industrially important concepts, radiation shields and re-radiating surfaces. We'll see examples of how to use these resistances to solve problems involving shields and radiating surfaces. Thank you.